Hello all you Hellions and welcome back. If you haven't seen last week's video, you should check it out. My best friend's husband, Steve, does not like horror of any kind, but agreed to watch a horror movie with me so I could film his reactions. He is a highly animated fellow and it was hilarious. He agreed to do another video with me if that video gets 300 views. So again, if you haven't seen it yet, head over and take a peek. Now, for this week's video, I once again went with The Fall of the House of Usher. This classic black and white was filmed in 1950 and has a very interesting take on the Usher history. Let's dive into it. We open with a man pulling up to a gentleman's club called the Gresham Club. He finds his friends who tell him they were just told a scary story. One of them mentions that Edgar Allan Poe has some heavy hitters. The newcomer tells them the scariest of Poe's work is the fall of the House of Usher. He finds the book and begins to read. We open with the tarn, or small mountain lake, that is in front of the house. This is in the original book, as is the man who arrives alone on horseback. Called to the house by a letter from his boyhood friend, Roderick Usher. He is, in fact, Roderick's best and only friend. Roderick asked his friend Jonathan to the house for pleasant company, for Roderick had been suffering from many ailments, such as overly sensitive hearing, negatively affected by light and sound, can only stand wearing certain fabrics and eating bland foods. His twin sister Madeline is also affected by many maladies such as a gradual wasting away that the resident doctor is unable to explain, and cataclyptic fits. This is when the body has a lack of response to external stimuli and muscular rigidity. Many people having these fits appear dead. Roderick is afraid that he and his twin will soon die. All of this was in the original book, as was the grounds around the house, barren, bleak, with an air of melancholy. Jonathan is greeted at the door by the valet, and there is also a resident doctor. Roderick is a great painter, and his chamber is filled with many paintings and stringed instruments strewn around. Since these are the only instrument he can stand to listen to, all of this is in the book. Now here it differs from the book. They have added some characters. We have Richard, the gardener, and Louise, the maid. Also a couple of others that we're going to touch on here soon. They also added a backstory to the ushers, one that explains the twins' ailments. As Jonathan is being led to Roderick's chamber, the doctor gives him this warning. I beg, sir, to introduce myself. Dr. Cordwell, physician to the family of Usher. I feel I must tell you, you are entering a most unhappy house. Heed my warning and leave while the chance is yours. After Jonathan goes to the guest quarters, the doctor comes to Roderick and explain that his father was murdered many years ago. He goes on to explain that the house and its occupants were cursed, and exactly why. As children, the twins were told never to go into the marshland at night, that it was dangerous. This, as the doctor explains, is because the family had built a torture chamber out there and did not want the kids to find it. The doctor produces a map that shows the only safe passage to this chamber through the marshes. He and Roderick go there, with Madeline following secretly behind. The doctor tells the story of Roderick's mother. She had a secret lover that she would meet at this chamber. Her husband found out and followed her one night. He saw his wife meet her lover outside the chamber, and they both went in together. The husband followed the lovers into the chamber. He attacks the man, tying him to a rack and forcing him to watch as the husband viciously beats his wife. Enraged, the lover curses the usher bloodline. He said Roderick and Madeline, the last of the ushers, will die before they are 30. The husband cuts the lover's head off with a sword, but not before the curse was placed. This is why Roderick and Madeline suffer from these ailments. We now see that the mother is still alive, but seeing her lover murdered drove her quite mad 
and no longer able to speak. She has been in the temple all this time, sitting vigil over the head of her lover. The body decayed, but the head lives on. It is explained the mother is docile until someone tries to touch the head. She then flies into a murderous rage with a superhuman strength. The mother's look kind of reminds me of Zelda in the original Pet Cemetery. The doctor goes on to explain that the only way to stop the curse that is slowly killing the last two ushers is by burning the head. However, due to the mother's strength, they will need a third person, two to restrain her, one to burn the head. So they come back to the temple with Richard, the gardener. Richard has given his instructions and the three go inside. Roderick struggles to restrain his mother. Not sure why, but the doctor is just standing by, watching, since he is the one that insisted it would take two men to hold her back, but okay. And Richard runs for the head. His leg gets caught in a trap, successfully holding him in place, while the mother gets out of Roderick's grip by cutting his arm and throwing the knife at the doctor who again is just standing by. The doctor says there is nothing they can do to help Richard. They leave him behind to meet his fate at the hands of the mother as the severed head watches on. Madeline is unable to find Richard the next day. Roderick, when asked, told her he sent Richard away and he will not be returning. Madeline speaks with Louise, the family maid, who tells her she saw Doc, Redrick, and Richard enter the woods last night and that only the doctor and Roderick returned. Madeline made a plan to go to the temple to search for Richard that night and told Louise if she didn't return in an hour to let Roderick know where she had gone. Madeline finds Richard and her mother. Madeline escapes, but her mother finds her using a secret passage into the house. This I absolutely love. I have always enjoyed a good trap door or secret passage. As a child, I wished to live in a house that had plenty of both, plus an attic and a basement. Living the dream. Madeline screams which somehow scares the mother off. For the next several days, Roderick is distraught. Now this is in the book. Roderick and Jonathan spend multiple days together with Jonathan trying to cheer his friend. They paint together, read together, and Roderick plays the guitar. All of this does little to help Roderick's melancholy disposition. Some days later, Roderick came to Jonathan to say that Madeline had been confined to her bed for some time now, She was fading due to her ailments and inevitably passed on. That the judgment of the ushers is beginning. Also in the book, Roderick wanted to place Madeline in a temporary entombment in the vault in the lowest part of the house. Due to her ailment, he did not want her placed in the family crypt just yet. They take Madeline in her coffin down to the vault. And with one last look at Madeline, Roderick hammers her coffin shut. Roderick is restless for the next several nights. He tells the doctor that Madeline is still alive, that he can hear her. The doctor says he will help. He goes to a drawer downstairs and gets a gun, then starts to open the door leading to Madeline's vault. Roderick, seeing this and understanding the doctor's plan, yells at him to not open that door. The doctor does anyway and is shot dead by Roderick. None of this happened in the book. This next part does, though. A wild storm is raging outside. Roderick, in restless distress, goes to Jonathan's room. He speaks of the wildness of the storm and opens the window. Seeing what this storm is doing to his friend, Jonathan closes the window and leads Roderick away from it. As Roderick is distracted, seemingly listening to what only he himself can hear, Jonathan reads to him of Ethelred. Ethelred breaks down the mighty wooden door to a castle. As the sound is described of the door splintering, Jonathan hears Madeline's coffin splintering. 
Thinking it is the storm outside, he continues reading. Ethelred, having entered the castle, comes face to face with a great dragon. Ethelred strikes the dragon over the head with his mace. The dragon lets out a terrible death scream, as Madeline does the same. No longer able to think this is the storm, Jonathan looks to Roderick. Roderick confirms the worst. Didn't you hear it? I heard it for a long time. Yet I dare not. I dare not speak. She's alive, I tell you. We have put her living in the tomb. I tell you, I heard her first evil movements in the hollow coffin many hours ago. Yet I dare not speak. And now Madeline is at the door. The rest of this movie does not happen in the book. Roderick is climbing backward up the stairs as Madeline is slowly following. Roderick, in fear, shoots her several times to no avail. We see their mother is back at the top of the stairs, watching as Madeline slowly stalks Roderick up the stairs through the attic and onto the roof into the storm. Roderick backs up too far and falls from the roof to his death. <coughs> Madeline disappears and we see her undisturbed coffin and the mother watches on. Lightning strikes the house setting it on fire. Jonathan escapes and watches the house burn to the ground. There was no fissure or crack that ran throughout the house, splitting it during the storm, causing it to fall into the tarn, as was in the book. The movie ends back at Gresham Club. There are several questions about the story, including... Well, I don't understand. Did they know she was alive when they put her in the coffin? Was she being slowly poisoned? What really killed her? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. The book was less than 30 pages long, so lots of room for additions. Although I tend to be an originalist, I greatly enjoyed this movie. I loved the backstory with the mother and her lover, and the added depths that comes with new characters. Therefore, I will be giving this movie five coffins. As anyone who has been watching this channel for a while can tell, I give out five coffins on the regular. I absolutely love older horror movies, even the bad ones. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time. I leave you now with a video of Vincent's first time in a canoe. What a good boy. He has been so good. Of course I have. I'm Vincent.